we give you glory. God, we give you praise, oh God. God, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. Father God, we worship you this evening, oh God. We set our minds on you this evening, God. God, we pull it down every weight, every distraction. We pull it down, oh God. And make you our main focal point. Oh God, we lift up your name this morning, um, this evening. We lift you up right now in the name of Jesus, God. Because we know if it had not been for you, where would we be, God? We lift your name up this evening. We set our minds to worship you, oh God. We set our minds to praise you this evening. God, we enter into your courts with thanksgiving, oh God. And praise and adoration. Father, God, we worship you because there's nobody like you, God. There's nobody like you, Jehovah. There's nobody like you, Jehovah. There's nobody like you, Jehovah. So we worship you in our Holy Spirit. We ask that you come and now, oh God. God, we set our desires on you. We ask that you come and now. In the name of Jesus, God, we welcome you now. In the atmosphere of God, we welcome you now. In the name of God, we welcome you now. God, there's nobody like you. We worship you in now. Father, God, we worship you now. And we invite your presence, oh God. We invite you into the atmosphere, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we welcome you now. God, we thank you that what the Spirit of the Lord is. That is liberty. That's what we welcome you in the name of Jesus. Now let him touch the people. 
Now, for me to make it through this whole time <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah, Father God, help his knees. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Ain't no making knees around here, all right? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to get into it. So, long suffering. So, there is a right way and a wrong way to suffer. So, some of the wrong ways, you, you get bitterness. Then you, you get fear because you, you're afraid of what's happening. As y'all saw uh, with, with Samuel, and he said, what are you doing? Who, who, saw, who, who was it? Saul? Was Samuel was? He said, what are, what are you doing? So it provoked him to move in fear because he, he only had to suffer for seven days. And then it'll cause you to move outside of God's will. But then it's also it says that hope deferred makes the heart grow weary. But what are you hoping for? Is your hope in the right place? Did God give you that place of hope? So I'm not going to stay on the wrong because, you, know, that, that you know, we can go on, go on, go on down there. But there is a right way to suffer. So I got a few points, you know, just a few. I'm going to hear my pre preacher preach, and I'm going to come on out. <laughs> so now when you suffer the right way, um, what can be produced or what can happen is a break. So if you go to Job, Job went through everything. He lost everything. I mean, that did his body, his family, his kids, all in a day. Now, we didn't have some stuff happen, but ain't nothing happened like that would happen to Job. But Job said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Naked I came, naked I shall leave, but blessed be the name of the Lord. So in that breaking point, my, I'm standing here on my knee or sitting here or have my, my position on my knees. I'm like, okay, am I going to hit a breaking point? Am I going to stand up in my own will? Because at that moment, Job's wife said, uh, curse God and die. So disrespectful. <laughs> but blessed be the name of the Lord. So the long suffering, it'll produce a breaking in you. And then... We were in uh, Hannibal, in a passage of hell. He, I mean, that man, he, he showed out. I tell you, he showed out. And so we were talking about infirmities. And then he talked about the spirit of infirmity and becoming one with the spirit of infirmity. So since we're talking about healing, so a lot of times when you see infirmity, it's not necessarily the spirit of it. So the spirit of it means you become one with it. So if you will go with me to Luke 13, Pastor Jamel, you don't mind reading for me, God bless you. You just read so nice. Read so nice. And you can speed read because, Lord Jesus, I need some read pads. Where's Mel when I need him? <laughs> yes, Luke 13. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Now, hold on. Now, right there, hey, that, was, that should have been be it. Woman, thou art loosed. He just spoke the word and the, the word is enough. So for me, the word is enough. If Jesus said, Chris, you healed him. I'm picking up my bed. I'm running on. But, but go ahead. Go on, uh, brother and preacher. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Now, one thing that, that Pastor Jamel, he said so nicely. He said that the word for her, because she had become one with it, it wasn't enough. So Jesus had to take his hands. He had to lay them on him. The only other time that Jesus laid hands on the sick was when he went and laid hands on the blind man and he pulled him aside from the crowd. So that's the only other time that Jesus had to go and put his hands on it because she had become one with it. So uh, the other day, me and Pastor Justin and Pastor uh, Brandon, we had a little situation. And I was like, all right, God. And uh, I was, it, it shook me because I said, God, I need some more power. I don't, I don't like not, I want it when I speak to it, I want it to move. Mm -hmm. And so when it didn't move how I wanted it to, I said, ho, 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 ho. 
So I, on, the, on the ride home, I said, God, I want some more power. What do I need to get more power? Because my appetite for healing, it ain't just for me. I want to heal somebody else. Because somebody else needs what's on the inside of me. And I, I want to walk into the hospital and be like, you're healed, you're healed, you're healed, you're healed. What's your cancer? You healed too. Anybody, you, you, you get a healing, you get a healing. Now, I, I want to see people get up. I want to see insurances mess up. Because that, that's how they get paid for. I want to see the doctors listen. Hey, they're going to move next door to us because uh, that money ain't coming like it was. Because we healing now. Because we're walking in our full potential. Our full healing anointing. Because we're supposed to do greater works than Jesus. So what are we waiting on? So, um, Pastor, jump over with me to uh, Luke, please. Luke, hold on, let me get back to my little nose. You know, this, this is getting hard to work out mm here. -hmm. Yeah, I just want to let y'all know. Uh, go to Luke 7. So, my appetite for healing is coming up. So, in Hannibal, there was a man who was, he was sick, and he, he usually, he plays drums. And he's almost, I mean, I think he is blind almost. At this point, he's blind, so he cannot see. So he got a word, you know, you need to play, you need to get your first step to healing again is to get back on the drums. Yes, wow. So he got to get back to his position. So what the what the mind would say, well, he can no longer play because he can't see. Yeah. But you got to understand, <laughs> one thing as a drummer, you don't need, only thing you need to know is where the stuff is at. All right. So he, he looked when he got there, yes, sir. he put his hand, I said, that's the snare. I said, that's your time, that's your time, that's your symbol. So when he got there, he was, he was nervous, so he was hitting stuff that he wasn't doing. So then, when he began to worship, you felt a shift happen. And then he started to play as if his eyes was open. I said, hold on now, you're not going to embarrass me, and my eyes is open, and your eyes is closed. You ain't just listen, Jesus. You're gonna disrespect me. I almost, I was, I almost like not to stick out of his hand, but you know, listen, that's a whole nother story. Oh, Jesus still working on me. I am not. Oh, I'm playing. I'm playing. But in that moment, my appetite for healing, I wanted his healing more than he wanted. I, I got up and said he needs to come and play. That's how much my appetite for healing is. So, so read uh, that Luke seven for me, Pastor. Uh, start at. Go ahead and start at one. It's fine. When he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying, that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. All right, now hold on. Now, the last scripture you just read, he, the word wasn't enough. He had to go lay his hands. Right. Now, in this scripture, here's what's crazy. It's not, it's not even the person's faith who's sick, but it was the man who was going for him's faith. So my appetite for healing is strong enough that it's going to heal Jamel. It's going to hear Pastor Water. It's going to hear Miss Sharon that she's going to send Jesus to heal. And I'm sure waiting on Jesus, glory, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. And so in that moment, he said, I have the authority. You have that authority. But he, he, his servant had long suffered. And obviously he had long suffered. He had a prepared heart that he was able to say, hold on, Jesus. You ain't got to do nothing but tell me the word. And I'm going to believe it. My my faith in you, my faith in your word makes me believe that he is already healed. So don't even come to my house. Just say he's healed. And I'm going to take your word and I'm going to run on. So 
We got the two more spots, and I'm, I'm getting out of y'all way, I promise y'all. Preach, preach, preach. Because listen, these knees, I'm just letting y'all know, <laughs> they're starting to burn a little bit. <laughs> so if y'all see me a little shaking a little bit, just know, because these knees, is, is they, they, uh, they get a little crunchy down here. Uh -huh. That crunchy? Uh, so we're going to talk about hope. So if you go to, uh, let's see here, I want to go to the man at the pool. That is John 5. So if you can jump over there and read that for me, Brother Preacher, when you get it. After this, there, were, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? All right, hold, hold on just, just one second. So, 38 years. So, so he's been, it's fair to say that he has suffered for a long time, right? right. Yeah. So, and then I said paralyzed. So, it's clear that he can't do nothing because all that he said, he's just talking. So, he, I don't know if he's paralyzed from the waist up. I don't know if he paralyzed from the neck down. I don't know. But you got one, one thing that I was talking to God. I said, well, what is he, what, what kept him there so long? But it was hope. It was hope and it was faith in God. But then he had also, he had hope in man. Because he said, nobody put me in. So that means he, he was waiting on just I, I, it's just one day somebody going to say, you know what, I'm not going to take my healing. I'm going to let you get yours and then I'll wait. So that, that piece of hope, it was still in humanity. And so then he goes on. And so then, then Jesus asked him, do you want to be made whole? So, so he, his faith is there. Now, I believe in God timing. So everything happens for a reason. And, yeah. and, 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 and everything is in God's time, in God's place, God's momentum, God's speed. Yeah. And so Jesus don't just show up. It, it, it's a reason, a purpose for yeah. him to be there. Yeah. Um, and so in this moment, I just wonder if, if Jesus said, I got to get there because his, his faith is starting to dwindle. Because if, if he was holding on for 38 years and he said, you know what, <laughs> that, last, that last shaking, that, that last little uh, jacuzzi, <laughs> I missed that. I, that was my last one I'm going to miss. If somebody don't put me in this time, I'm going to roll over and die. So if it's that time, if it's that moment, if it's that place that some people are in because it's long suffering, if it's that time that you need to come out and be healed, and, and you get to the hospital, or you get to that place, that house, that Walmart, that Walgreens, that Target, wherever you get to, and somebody said, I need a healing, because if I don't get healed today, I'm going to go home and die. Mm. But my appetite for healing is strong enough, and it's stronger for somebody else than it is for me. Yeah. So despite the pain that I am feeling, right. On my knees, I believe in saying yes, Lord, because I believe that I want to see more of those canes hanging on the wall. I, I'm ready for people to walk in and take their cigarettes out their pockets and leave them on the altar. I, I, I'm ready for addictions to be broken. I'm ready to see somebody walk in with a cane and, and a walker, and we put the whole walker on the wall. I'm ready for them to take one of the electric scooters and say, well, y'all can throw that in the trash or donate that to somebody else. But that's what I am ready for. I don't want to have to worry about trying to wait till the jacuzzi go again. I don't want to have to wait until Sunday morning for somebody's leg to be pulled out. I'm going to say, sir, is your back hurting? Yeah. Well, well, let, let me 
let, let me see. Can I have two chairs, Walmart? I know I, I know I ain't paid for them, but can I have two of your chairs right quick? And it, it's the left leg. And in Jesus' name, you are here. And so, but my long suffering, my, my sitting and, and sleeping on the floor, my, my family being torn apart, all the things that I had to go through in the midst of it, me sitting, and he said 38 years, but for me, I'm 29. So my 29 years of living and everything I've been through, everything I've suffered through, it all comes down to I'm doing it for somebody else's healing. So I'm suffering for somebody else. I'm suffering for an anointing. And now I got, I'm saying, God, I want more power. Because I, I want to see demons. I want to see them cast out. And when I say in the name of Jesus, you got to go. So I, I, I don't want to have uh, to, to build myself up. I don't want to have to he me and get there. I just want to say, Jesus in the thing, boy. I want to look at him and say, pick up your van and walk. I want to look at him and say, grab your in the Hillcrest, Southcrest. We, we out of here, buddy. Let's go. Because my appetite for healing, I, I've suffered long enough. I have watched people suffer long enough. See, this world is on edge. I mean, that's for all the killings and the, 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 the shootings and all this stuff. It's just, you can feel the tension. But I want to say peace be still. I, I, I want to look at somebody and say, hey, it's going to be all right. And they can feel the conviction and the anointing of God behind it. Because it's the peace of God that passes all understanding. But they can feel the power coming out of our word. Because the word, it is enough. And I've suffered a long time. All right, all right. All right. Up on my knees. But despite the pain, I still say, yes, Lord. All right, all right. Uh, Janelle, go ahead and just read uh, just a little bit more for me, sir. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. All right. Immediately, he was made whole. But again, all that he did was speak. Yeah. He just spoke. So one thing I was looking, I said, "Well, well, God, well, 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 why didn't you touch him? Well, 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 why, why didn't you have to, you know, help him up or nothing?" But it was his faith that held him on for thirty-eight years. He was able to say, "You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna take this word, <laughs> and I'm gonna pick up my little." Two cots into my my little pillow, my little straw. I don't know what they were sleeping on back then. My little rock or whatever. I don't know what they found comfortable. Because Lord Jesus, I need Tempur-Pedic in my life. 38 years. And he said, pick it up and walk. And he took the word and did it. All right, so I got, I'm going to go one more place. One more place. 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 I can't talk right. Place. Place. Loose your hoes. See my knees as they acting up and it's causing my tongue to get her out. <laughs> I feel the pain. <laughs> There's a shaking in the spirit. A shaking in my knees. <laughs> okay. So we're going to jump over to Mark 5. Mark 5 and 25. Please, sir, if you don't mind. Whew. All right. Is it hot or is it just me? Yeah, it's a little warm. Y'all be blessed. I'm just saying. Good Lord, have mercy. I don't do it. Two hands up, Jesus' name. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor Joel. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Okay. Um, 
Go over to NIV and read it one more time, brother and the preacher. I felt wind before. I don't feel no wind or nothing now. Jesus is hot in here. Different <laughs> prizes. I would read, but English was not my strong suit in school, so I didn't try to laugh at me. <laughs> and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Okay. So, one thing I just got to make sure that we all understand. Jesus wasn't wearing skinny jeans. So, it, this when you see, they say, touch his clothes. They talk, this is, that piece was way out here. It wasn't, you know, you know the little tight leg where it's, you know, you touch it basically the skin. No. This, this was just, this, this hang. A, a scar. And so, but the, the other point I want to make is desperation. It, it produces that, and she also had a prepared heart. So, in, in her time, she's saying, okay, I have been here, and she had been broken because she said, I didn't spend all my money. I didn't want to hear. I didn't want to hear every doctor, Hillcrest, Southcrest, Tulsa Bone and Joint. Tulsa Chiropractic, St. Francis, Orthopedic Center. I didn't been to all of them, and I'm still bleeding. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I have exhausted all resources. Yes. But she still had hope. Yes. And she still had faith that I'm going to be healed. Yes. So even though she's going through the pain, she says, okay, well, what now? So she says, Jesus, that's the... The, 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 I heard of this man named Jesus, and I tried all my other options, so I mean, I may as well go ahead and try out Jesus. And, and, and so, uh, on her journey, she gets focused. That's the next point, because it, it helps to present a focus. When you get long suffering, you say, I am focused on getting my healing. I'm focused on getting somebody else's healing. And, and so she said, okay, I got to get through this crowd. And so after you talk about all these points, this woman really hit every point of these attributes that she wanted to get healed. Because she got down on her knees and she crawled to Jesus. But here's what you got to remember. Jesus said, who touched me? And then the, the disciples said, are you crazy? Do you not see all these people around here? And, and so the, how I think, this, this, this is my brain. I, I think of a party that I, I didn't even, I ain't never been to know, you know, I don't do them concerts, but I don't do that. But I have been to parties. <laughs> and uh, when we elbow to elbow, and the only way you're getting out from elbow to elbow is you going outside. And so I can't even imagine getting down on my knees and crawling in that. But her desperation yeah. Uh, and her focus on getting healed uh, 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 is that I, I'm just going to do it. Whatever it costs, I'm going to do it. I, I've already been broken. My pockets are literally broke. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So on her way there, she, she said, all right. All right. So then I can just imagine that her hand is getting stepped on. Yeah. <laughs> so she didn't have time to even get on 50. Cause I, man, you sit me down here. You can scoot over. And, but they trying to get to Jesus too. But she said, you know, I, I, I am focused on being yeah. healed. Yeah. So, hey, you step on my finger, it's, it's okay. I, I, I forgive you. Because forgiveness is a part of it also. Yeah. But then she also, it, it, took, it took some patience because to get down there, you got to slowly cry. You can't just bust through. Cause, I mean, you know, she's a woman, so she's most likely she's a weaker vessel. And if you got some Brandon and Jamel's up there, I mean, you ain't just finna move it. Yeah. I mean, you know, just some ways, but, you, know, you have to do some work. So it took some patience to get there, but in her long suffering, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know if I can just get to that place, I, I'm a worshiper. So when, when I'm going through and I get hurt and my heart is heavy, I say, if I can just get to his presence, 
if, if I can just strike up a minstrel, so that I may prophesy, and if I can just hear the string, if I can just get one just for me, and if I can just say, Father God, come and get me. Father God, I need you. But see, I understand the power of the word. So I can just say in that moment, instead of having to come all the way to 2024, I can just say, Father God, I'm right here. Father, because his word is enough, and he already said, you are here. So now I can stand on his word. Ooh, my knees, God, Jesus, thank you. I felt the relief in that thing. It's Jesus Christ. So I can stand on his word knowing that after I have suffered, after I've done all I can, that Jesus is there, he's in me, and Jesus is here, he's right here. He is right here, and he never leave you, nor will he forsake you. And that's what I hold very dear to me. That, that is a scripture that, that that's my, my spiritual real estate. So when, when I know when things get rocky, he will never leave me, nor will he forsake me. So when things are troubled and the, and the waters are, are crazy and my mind is, is being pulled here and there, I'm like, listen, I don't know how I'm going to make this, but he's right here. And I've suffered long enough and my appetite for healing is so strong. That I am, I'm ready to be healed. My heart is prepared. My mind is ready. So, Father God, we give you praise. I thank you for healing. I thank you that we believe you, God. I thank you that your word is enough. God, you are more than enough. You said you watch over your word to perform it. You said according to your faith, fit up to you. So what do you believe? I say that I am healed. I say that I am a healer. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> we have to clap your hands together for the pastor. <laughs> pray for him. Pray for his name. Say amen for him. That's called with his topic was long suffering. Is that right? Yeah. Say amen. I, I want to greet every guest that is in the room. Will y'all say amen for them? Yeah. Welcome home. Mrs. Nina, I saw her back there. Where she I told her, said, come home, mother. And she said, okay. I'm, I'm, okay. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, have the next one. So Bishop has added a um real true story. Bishop has added a um, another attribute for the recipe of healing, and that one is desperation. Yeah. And so um, uh, we have plans for this coming. We have we have plans. I don't want to announce them yet. So then we're going to finish with that one, and then that'll be it. Can you say Amen? Yeah. I want to read something very quickly before we get out of here. Run run right quick to Hebrews chapter four. Go to Hebrews. Go to the fourth chapter. The first verse to like five, I think. God wants us healed. This is the whole thought what he ministered tonight, these other nine or 10 ingredients to healing is to help us receive what has already been provided for us. So not only does God want us healed, but he also wants us to heal. And what I'm noticing with us is that it is difficult to give something or to move in something that you don't possess yourself. It's difficult to give a grace that you don't have for yourself. Can I give you an example? So I'm at, at work the other day and this lady comes in and I ask her a question and she's on her phone. She's on her phone. So instead of me, you know, harping on the fact that she's on the phone I just reached around there and answered the question on the screen for her so when I did that she realized that she missed a cue so she cusses <laughs> younger she cussed she cussing in line 
And so she starts beating herself up right in the in the lobby. She says, I am so sorry. You know, somebody apologizes once and then they let it go. But then there are times when people are really steeped in shit and they keep overly apologizing. So I said, it's okay, Grace. I said, you, you know, you weren't paying attention. It's all right. No, nothing lost. So during the whole transaction, she's killing herself. She's beating on herself. She said, I just really hate that I did that because I get on people about being on the phone in my office. I said, well, Grace. I said, so the next time you see someone doing that, offer them the same grace that I just gave you. She said, you know what? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but if I don't have it for me, then I can't give it for you. If I don't have empathy for me, then there is no use of, of you expecting me to give it to you because I don't have it for myself. So God not only wants us healed, but he also wants us to possess it and know it enough that we can offer it to those, what he said tonight, that are in need of it. Now, everybody said the state of healing. When you are deathly ill in certain circumstances, what they will do is they will, I need all the nurses to help me now. They will put you in what's called a medically induced coma. Is that right? To slow your body down, to cause it to operate on as least amount of energy as possible to help preserve your body so that it can fight. Medically induced. God wants to put us in a state of healing. A state of healing. A state of healing. Not just a healing service, not just a touch, not just a shout, but a state of healing. Let me show you what it looked like. Ready? Hebrews 4, this is amplified. I can't do, I can't do James tonight. James had my, I can't do no vows. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still remains and is freely offered, everybody say today. Let us fear in case any one of you may seem to come short of reaching it or think that he has come too late. Verse 2 says, for indeed we have, have had the good news of salvation preached to us. Every person in this room has been preached to before. Is that right? right. Just as the Israelites who often win the good news of the promised land came to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them. So we have been teaching healing, but it is benefiting those whom it is benefiting, and it is not benefiting those whom it is not benefiting. So there's a group in this room who have it, who say, you know what, I have it crossed every T, dotted every I, but because of, because of I am in faith in who and what Jesus is, where the dots are dotted and T's are crossed, I still possess what he gave me. But there's another group that says, I gotta be prayed up. I gotta read 30 scriptures today. But when you know that you are his and he is yours and you possess it, whether you have been in prayer all day or not, I still have it. You ready? Go to the second part of verse 2. But the message they heard did not benefit them because it was not united with faith. So when we talk healing, if you don't marry it with faith, you're going to miss it. If it's not tied in with faith, say I'm going to miss it. It says it was not tied with faith in God by those who heard it. For we believe, that is, we who personally trust and confidently rely on God, enter into 
that rest. What is that rest? Everybody say state. state. That rest is so that we have his inner peace. Now because we are confident in our salvation. And assured of his power. This healing thing is directly correlated to faith. There have been people in this ministry who don't have a strong prayer life. They're not even on the prayer team. They're not in the room. At, what, what time y'all pray, Mom? What, what time y'all be in the room? And they, they, I, I can call individuals names that have been and are a part of this ministry that are not intercessors. But they heard the word of faith. And believed it and moved in it and saw bodies physically healed. What he taught tonight is that that centurion, because of his profession, understood authority. Because I can tell you what to do and you do it. So the principle of faith works the same way. The only thing I need you to do is just release the word and that's good enough. So Sunday, I'm done. Sunday, what the Lord wanted to remind us of is that you have permission to rest. Sometimes God won't allow you to be healed in a state of inner turmoil. If your spirit is in turbulence, sometimes God got to settle you down, put you in a state of healing or an environment or a room where it's happening to get the torment to stop long enough for you to receive. God, in this season of your life, what he's saying is, is I want to shut down the noise. I want to shut down what you are and what you're not and where you've been and what you have and what you haven't done. And I simply want you to receive him. And so the fight that many of us are dealing with is that what do I got to do? Believe. That is the good news. The good news is that come unto me, all ye who have been working, and I will give you rest. I know it's counterculture because when someone gives us a gift, there is usually an expectation behind that gift. You need to respect me. You need to you need to say thank you. That thank you ain't good enough. I got it now. If 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 you give me a gift on my birthday, then when your birthday roll around, y'all know how y'all do. Well, I gotta go to Griana's birthday party because she came to because she came to mine. And some of y'all don't even like giving gifts, but you give it out of obligation. What God is saying is, I have a free gift for you and the only contingency to it is I want you to believe this is a mind shift because we're not used to getting things without a clause behind it I gotta work for it no you don't if you can believe so Sunday he said to us that some of us, the way that we were raised is stopping, is fighting our ability to receive. The mindset, that's why he said, I want to put you in a state of healing. Because when you are in a state of healing, there is no fight. God tonight, through what he taught, wants to take the fight out of us. And I'm telling you that, that even tonight, God is healing you he's bringing you out of a state of torment how i know that god is serious about healing because listen it is possible i have seen people receive physical healing in faith in a room that's charged with the healing anointing get that healing it manifests in their body they're healed and then go home and come out of faith and what god took off of them come back on them. You ever seen that before? I've seen ears open up and then that individual go back to 
what they were in before he healed them and the ear condition, the eye condition, the body condition went right back. But if you live in a state, the punishment, the counter to living out of the spirit is that you have to pay the price for it. Living under the law of works means that if you're guilty of one, you're guilty of them all. God said, I want to take that off of you. I want you not just to be healed in a service, but I want you to live healed. Say, Lord, I want to live healed. Come on, say, Lord, I, I want to live healed. God wants to download in us so much healing that we are oozing with it. But the enemy is, is trying to convince us that you don't qualify for it. And so even tonight when we talk about healing and breakthrough and deliverance, the brain goes to talking about why you can and why you're not qualified and why you don't, why that he ain't talking to you. He's talking to your neighbor, but say he's talking to me. Come on, say healing belongs to me. Now, Chris, what, what always makes me, what always makes my, my, my toes curl when, you, when we talk about the woman with the issue of blood is that when she said, if I could just touch, that's not written anywhere in scripture. You will not find if I could just touch the hem of it. She quoted that. She declared that out of her faith. Are y'all hear what I'm saying tonight? If you would believe that he has already provided it for you. We're not asking God to heal us. We are receiving it. Healing ain't coming. It's already here. I'm going to say it again. Healing ain't on its way. It's already here. The only thing you got to do is open your faith up and receive what's already in your package. I want you to stand to your feet just for a moment. I'm going down. The Lord, he said that I want to heal you rested. Some of you that are waiting on healing, some of you that are believing God to receive healing, this is what he said. He said, find a place in him to rest your spirit. Listen to his wisdom. Find a place in God where you can rest in him. He says, and in that state, I'm going to heal you. So much there's too much turbulence. There's too much fighting on the inside. Like a bull in a jewelry store. God said, uh, I'm going to heal you. You can receive, but we got to stop. So that when you get it, you can hold on to it. There are people in this room tonight that are in a state of turmoil. God says, I want to calm your spirit. Close your eyes tonight. I want you to just open up your hands. Open up your hands like you are receiving. We're not going to war. We're not going to scream. We're not going to do any of that. I feel him right there. Just hold your hands out. Yeah, there's some more coming. Just hold those hands out. Come on, just hold those hands out. Just, I just want you to simply say, I receive. Come on, just to all over this room, I 
Yeah, yeah. We're not fighting. We're not pleading. Hey. Yes, we're not begging. We're not afraid. Tonight, we are receiving. Yes, Lord. We are receiving. Eco. Come on, just say, I receive. It is mine. The adversary has, come on, keep those hands open. The enemy has been stealing peace from us. He has been stealing the peace that God has already given us. But tonight we receive. Come on, I, I see stress leaving the mind. Spirit of God, I thank you that blood pressure, oh yes, is coming down. Come on, we receive. Spirit of God, all that you have for us. Hey, we receive. Come on, we receive it. Come on, come on, I receive. It's mine. Enemy, you can steal it from me. But Father, tonight I want what's mine. Hey, I want that peace. Come on, I need you to open your mouth here. I want that peace. Woo! Hiya! Yeah, I want that peace. When the thief has been caught, he's got to pay. Slip those hands out. If you were in this room and you know that the enemy has been stealing, I want you to hold those hands out as, 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 as far as you can. Tonight we declare that the torment, that the weight, that the stress, it stops. Come on, we declare tonight hey, that it's receiving time. Whoa! We don't deserve the Holy Ghost. But he gave him to us. Hey! So let's say, I've got something for you. If you can receive. Whoa! Oh! I know what the enemy is saying. But God says, I have something big for you. Do not in this hour disqualify your self Ooh, the Lord says tonight a false weight comes off of thee yes a false one he said Sunday a lying weight it breaks off of thee tonight hey and the Lord said I'm breaking it off of you because I'm getting ready to rebuild your faith. And the Lord says, what has been delayed is coming now. Because faith is going to draw it. Woo! Come on, put those hands up. Come on, hey! My faith is going to draw it. If you believe in God for anything in this room, I want you to tell God my faith is going to draw it. Come on, my faith is going to draw it. Come on, declare it, my faith. Come on, open your mouth, my faith. Hey, my, come on down in here. My faith is going to draw it. Come on, say my faith. I want you to declare it. Say my faith is going to draw it. Come on, say, my faith is going to draw it. My faith is going to draw it. If you, look at me, if you're going to receive it, it's coming by faith. If you are going to receive it, it's coming by your faith. Where is the enemy trying to work? In the area of faith. Father, I thank you today. I thank you tonight. You are rebuilding 
faith. He's somebody. There's about 10 people in this room tonight that your hope in God is on the edge. Your expectation has been beat low. But I prophesy to you tonight that you are not at your end. But you are on the brink of the greatest miracle. The Lord says, I need you to stay at Kamasa. I need you to stay in faith. I give the Lord a wave offering. Come on, just stay right there. Just tell him yes to it. Stay right there. Yeah, just tell him yes to it. Come on, just tell him yes to it. Come on, tell him yes. Just to go back there and put your hands on our mysteries back, please. Mystery, I want you to close your eyes and just put your hands out. Just put your hands out. God says that you don't look like it, but you are under tremendous pressure. Tremendous mental, emotional pressure. But the Lord says today, I want to take that off of you because I want you free. And I don't know what this is. He said, but, but a condemnation tonight is broken from over you. Yes, Lord. The enemy is trying to put a guilt of success on you. The Lord says, I have put in your hands, I've put in your hands the ability that I have put in them. And, and the Lord says that the enemy desires to cause you to second guess that and there is even a fear of loss but God says tonight yeah, I favor you oh. and he says when you rest tonight you are going to sleep he says when you get up in the morning you're going to get up lighter so now I want you to just open your spirit. Come on, open. E. Yes, open. There's a weight that's got to come off of you. The Lord says, I don't want you to go back to that house carrying. I don't know what it is. But we pray for you tonight. Come on, church. Come on, we pray that where the spirit of the Lord is. Come on, we fight for you. Hey, be free in Jesus' name. Every false stress, every stress that you have carried, look like for the last three to five years, God says, Tonight, I'm taking it off of you. Come on, fight. Come on, fight. The Lord says, I love you. And I desire you to do more. Hey! He, I'm asking Yes, Lord. Father, I prophesied to her household that you would bless them beyond measure. That you would restore and come outside. Joy. Yeah. I thank you. That you're going to restore joy. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Come on, say in Jesus' name. Come on, say in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Give 
every weight that is false. Say, I'm throwing it to the side in Jesus' name. God wants to make you light. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. A state of healing is coming over you. Some of you are not resting. My prayer for you is that when you, when I see you again, when we see each other again, that you will be rested. The enemy is fighting us. He's fighting us tooth and nail. This young man right here with the champ, put your hands up. Just close your eyes. Close your hands. He said, who is that? Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Come in. What's your name? Kevin. Man, Father, I thank you for Kevin. I thank you that you know him. You know his past. You know his present. But most importantly, you know his future. I don't know what he needs from you. But I set myself in agreement. Hey, that everything that he has need of. Everything that has been broken. Everything that has been stolen from you. I give you praise, Father. That you are going to restore it. I, I, I see some places that have been ripped from you. You have almost been broken down to nothing. But the Lord says, I brought you here to pronounce over your life, I'm doing a new thing. And I see words of family members. I see words. I, I see pronouncement over you. But I prophesy to you a new season, man. Hey, I said a new season. Now, Spirit of God, fill him. He's been empty. And he's been looking for love. He's been looking for a family. He's been looking for a safe place. But I thank you tonight that he's found hope. I thank you that he's found hope. I thank you that he's found hope. I thank you that he's found hope. Now, Father, Father, restore him. God is going to fill you with his spirit tonight. And there is, there is nothing that you've done. There is no place that you've been. There's nothing that you're even in now that is going to disqualify you from receiving the Holy Ghost. And so I'm holding you. I'm holding you because it, it is the embrace of God. My mama sat down. The Lord says, I, I, I know about it all. He said, but I still love you. Hey, come on, man. Open your mouth. <laughs> we receive. Come on, receive the Holy Ghost. Just put your hands up. Just say, I receive, man. You need this. You ain't got to work for it. There is no qualification but to just believe. Say I receive. <laughs> Come on, that's it. It's breaking. Just say I receive. Come on, say I receive. <laughs> the Lord. The Lord knows where you have been. The Lord knows the torment that you have been encountering. But I want you to know wherever you live, wherever you lay your head. He said that the torment stops in Jesus' name. Let that go. There's a pain. There's a pain. The Lord said, you got to forgive yourself. Because you're carrying a condemnation. Hey! The Lord said, I'm erasing that. I'm erasing that. You have made some errors. You have made some mistakes. But the Lord said, I'm not holding it against you. <laughs> now, bless it. Be kind. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Pastor Brandon, wrap him up. Wrap him up. Come on, 
to receive it. Just put your, I'm done. Just put your hands up one more time. Put your hands up. Father, recalibrate us from warfare to receiving. We are not in a state of fighting, but this is a state of commanding what you want to come to you. The Lord says command it every area that is counter to what God said in your life, he says speak to it. You don't have to war. You ain't got to scream. You ain't got to yell. The Lord says speak. There is a new authority on us. There is a new knowing and an assurance as we come into this next place of faith. The Lord says I'm making it easier for you. The Lord says more money, less work. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord says, I'm taking the toil out of the summer. He says that the remainder of this summer will not be a hard season, but I'm going to cause it to be easy. Yes. Yes, In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Look for the peace of God. Follow the peace of God. Your decision making is going to be made based on peace. You are going to feel the enemy pull you into this old season of fighting and of frustration and of works. You got to tell them, I'm not going with that. This is a season of peace. Father, I declare over every home, every address that is represented here tonight, send the peace of God. These bedrooms I keep looking at. Father, let them be a bed in a room of rest and not a room of fighting. The enemy is stealing from you in your bedroom. But the Lord said, I call that place when you get home tonight. I want you to declare over your bedroom. Listen to what he's saying. I want you to pronounce over your bedroom. This is a place of peace. Because some of y'all sleep in a prison cell and just call the bedroom. But the Lord says tonight you take authority over that space. Some of us sleep or lay in the bed and that is where the enemy is doing his best work. While you're laying down. When you go home tonight, take authority. This is a place of rest. Say this is the place of rest. Say it again, this is a place of rest. This is a place of rest in Jesus' name. Look at that person next to you. Say, please rest. Please rest. Please rest. Tell them. Yeah, tell them. Say, please, please rest. rest. Say, please rest. It's free. It's free. Tell them. Say this last thing. Say, before your next vacation, you can rest before you get there. Tell them. Say, you don't have to wait. Until you get on the boat, until you get on the plane, tell them you don't have to wait till you get to the hotel room. You can rest where you live. That's the word for somebody that you can rest where you live. You don't have to pay the hotel fee. You ain't gotta pay hundred dollars a night, fifty dollars a night, two fifty. You can rest where you paying the rent at. The devil is lying to us. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to wait till I get to the higher to rest. I'm going to rest in my own bed. Do not let old Slewfoot, the old saints used to call him. He is stealing from us. And the Bible says that when the thief, Tyre, when the thief is caught, he's got to pay. The devil owes us some money. There is some rest that we have forfeited. And I want to know where it at. Somebody say yes. yes. And so if you're going to get indignant, get indignant with the enemy because he's been stealing from you. 
Have you ever seen a cell phone bill or an electric bill or a water bill and they have just tacked charges on for months at a time? You know how pissed off you get when you call the cell phone people and you say, I want to speak to it, but that, that same energy, that same energy, you need to get that about your rest. When, when it's time to get paid at the job and, and your check is short and you know you've worked that extra overtime and you're expecting it, you got stuff to do, you get ready to go out of town and they say, well, we might have to mail you. You might have to wait till the next half. And you say, oh, no, that same, that, yes, yes, I'm having flashbacks. You know that same energy? Whatever need to be done just need to be done. Yes, sir. That same intensity is the same intensity that you're going to have to use for your rest. Somebody asks you, can you do something and you already stretched too thin? You, I can't do it. You have to cause, prepare the others. I can't do it. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I know you're thinking. Think long and hard. I want you to find at least three areas where you have been being stolen from. Three areas this week. Find three areas where you should be resting and you're not. Three areas. Everybody say a state of healing. In Jesus' name. Pastor Chris. We all say God bless you for the for the preaching. Your knees. <laughs> we we should give tonight, shouldn't we? We should give tonight, shouldn't we? Is it care? Is it care? Care. Care. Welcome home. And I said, look, come on. We love you. That's, that's the love of God that you feel. And I, when I first came to the gates, I cried so much. I got dehydrated. So you, you just let the tears flow, man. Just, just let them flow. That nobody knows the, the, the amount that you have been carrying. But I had to get some jugs of water when I first came because it was just a release for me. So I feel you. I want everybody that's mother, you, you ushering tonight. That's what you I want everybody that can to get $40 in your hand. 40 shorty. Get $40.
have women's only sessions and the men's only sessions. And so you know how we do it. So it's gonna be good. Pastor Brittany is gonna be with the men, the women. And uh, either me, Pastor Jamel, or Brandon is gonna be with the men. So come, come prepared. It's gonna be good. I promise you. Bring a lady. Bring a fellow. You should see a flyer sometime tomorrow for that, so that you can share it. Um, it's been a couple months, I think. It's been a couple months. So we long overdue to deal with some issues specific to the man and specific to the woman. Stand, let me pray over you before you leave. We got people traveling in and out of state. And Bishop and Pastor Justin, Pastor Jamel, and Jeremiah and Chris made it back safely from Hannibal uh, Sunday night and last night. So we are grateful to God that there was no issue. How, did y'all count how many documented about how many people got physically healed? I think he said eight. At least eight people physically left that meeting in Hannibal healed. Somebody say amen. Father, I thank you for this congregation. I thank you for their faith. I thank you for their determination to see what you have in store for them. Father, we thank you that we are just scratching the surface of healing. But I want you to throw your weight around amongst us. I thank you tonight for rest. I thank you, Father, tonight that as we lay down in our beds, that you would cause us to enter into a state of healing. Father, reveal every area where the adversary is stealing from us so that we can have the victory. And everybody say, in Jesus' name. Make sure that you greet somebody before you leave. The sun is still up. Greet them before you leave.